but I think uh, for today's class, we can have some uh, overview on uh, line integral. And I think most of today's course will be an overview and some examples. Uh, so far, uh, the first part of the lecture, uh, what we have is the line integral or the introduction of the factor fields the line integrals and then the fundamental theorem of the line integral so that's basically the whole content inside the line integrals they, they uh, there is some uh, terms we call conservative the factor field conservative or not and then we have the independence of the path which determine it is conservative or not okay. so maybe let me let me I finish the example five, right? Uh, you say we have a quiz on oh, May sixteenth, but sixteenth is Thursday. Oh, should be the next. Oh, Let me check. Okay. I think I I saw wrong wrong dates. Let me let me check again. Oh yeah, sixteen is so. It should be, uh, it should be 13. It should be 13 next week, okay? Because the content is not that much. So 13 next week, next week, okay? Next week, one hour. Okay. So hopefully today and maybe Friday, I can give you some examples, practice, and maybe some exercise that I can prepare. Uh, for now, I have some exercise for you after this page. Uh, a simple exercise. And hopefully I can prepare another one, okay? So, this is an, an, another example showing you the uh, function. Now it's function of three variables. The f, the factor field f, x, y, z. So basically, we start by taking the del f. Okay, from this part, we can take the, the del f, or um, now we can have. Uh, so, because we have this, right? Which means that we can we can see from the uh, from the structure of the factor field. It is basically, we have three different partial derivatives, right? We have the uh, partial x, which is y squared. We have partial y, which is 2xy plus e with power of 3z. We have partial z, 3ye with power of z, 3z. Okay. Okay, so our goal is to find the potential function or the small f, which means we can have three different possible uh, roots. We can start from partial x, right? We can start from this partial x. We can start from partial y, and we can start from partial z. I hope you can see the difference. Uh, this is partial, and that is the potential function. And although they have the same f, but, but what I mean, this f is partial. It means that we have this uh, x, y, z as a substrate. OK, so basically, what we do now is we are going to integrate in the del f, which we have three different uh, partial. We can ch choose partial x, y, or z, and then integrating Partially, okay, we can say it's partial integrations. Okay, so if we choose the first one, then we are going to integrating. So let, let's choose this. Let's say choose this one. So that we can say that the f, x, y, z, we are going to, to integrating with respect to x partially which we get the, the x, y squared. And then we have a functions. Now, because it's three variables, so what is the uh, constant for the integrations? We are going to have a partially, let's say we have another 
uh, functions, let's say we are taking g, and this will be two variables function, okay? And this g is actually, we can say, okay, g. So g is a constant with respect to x, which means when we derive g, it's becoming or a uh, zero. So we have the f, the function, as this. And then our goal is we are kind of we need to find what is g. So if we derive this, either derive with y or z. We are going to equal to the other partial, right? So that, that's our goal, equaling these two equations. Let's say we are going to derive with partial uh, y. So we get fy or partial y. This will be, uh, now becomes 2xy, so we're de deriving y. And then we have g now partially y of yz. And based on what we have in the uh, available information, this e with power of 3z becomes our uh, partial for gy, right? So we can take this as our next approach that the partial g is become this three uh, e with power of three z. And then we are going to integrate one more to get the g function g. So integrate one more. We integrate with respect to y. Okay. So integrating, let me write here, integrate with respect to y. So compare with, if we have the factor fields uh, with two variables, we can go directly and get the results. But with three variables, we sort of having two processes, okay? two processes, okay? So first is three variables, and then there will be two variables, okay? and then we get the, the, the final uh, results. Okay, now we integrate with respect to y, then we get the g, This becomes, because there's no y in the equations, then we can just uh, immediately, immediately multiply this with, with y. And we have another constant. Be, 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 and this, this constant h is basically, so if we have two variables y, z. We, 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 we integrate with y. So this will be, this must be a function of z, right? Function of z. So this h is function of z. <clears throat> and finally, if we <coughs> if we differentiate with respect to z, We are going to have uh, this e becomes three y e three z plus h prime z and this part becomes our uh, we can let, let me write G Z Y Z okay. and this G 
the partial uh, z of g is actually equal to our uh, function partial z, then we say that because there is nothing here, then we can immediately conclude that the h prime z is zero, so that the original function of h, this will be some constant k. Just a, just a regular constant. So the desired functions, the potential function, is this x y squared plus y e 3 z okay so adding this g g is this and h will be uh, zero or a constant okay. and then if we verify the del f this will be uh, taking up the each partial, this will be uh, y squared, and then this will be uh, 2xy plus e3z, and then the z will be uh, 3yE3z. Okay, and this is, this is the same as the factor fields. This is just my confirmations that we have found the uh, potential functions. Okay. So potential function is this. Okay. Okay, so three variables, we can still finding the uh, potential functions. The difficulty, however, uh, is we need to be careful on which part of the partials we are working on, okay? So as long as you are focused on each variable, x, y, z, which one you choose, as long as you consistently keeping up those variables, I, 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 I guess uh, that will be, um, I think you will get the, the final results. And I think every time you get the results, supposedly result, you can check, take the partials for this uh, factor two, taking up the del f, make sure that it goes back to the original uh, factor two, okay? I think uh, checking back is, Pretty much, as long as this is pretty much direct uh, approach for derivative, it should be uh, easier than doing the partial integration, right? Okay. So that's the uh, the example five. Now let, let's continue for some more practice. I, I choose several questions from the simplest one and uh, up until a little bit uh, complicated. L let's say we took, took one from this from 3 to 10 just to name whether they are uh, <coughs> conservative or not. So how to find conservative or not? So basically, because all the vector fields have two variables, so basically they have the del f. So we assume that they have the del f, which is the partial for uh, the, the functions. 
and then we need to partially derive each x and y axis and check whether they are equal or not okay so basically we need to check okay we need to check so check the del f in f and use the the clay roads it's earthquake right i thought i was like why i feel dizzy <laughs> okay okay i think not really much right okay so the clay road says that whenever we have the partial x, y, and partial y, x, they are going to be equal. So we need to make sure that they are equal. And we can say that they are simply connected and it will be conservative when they are equal. So first, maybe, let, let, let's choose which one. Maybe number, number five, maybe it's interesting. So number five, so this is the partial x, this is the partial y, right? So we need to, to, to take derivative partially for partial x, need to be equal with, so let me write first, so check, okay, check whether they are equal. So partial x, so d dy of y squared e x y. Okay, so some exercise on calculus one and calculus two. So we need to have a, because it's y, we have y here and y here, so we need to make a product rule. So don't forget that. So this will be two y e x y plus uh, y squared so x, y squared, e, x, y, right? Or uh, 2y plus x, y squared, e, x, y, okay? Yeah, I think it's simple enough. And then check the other one. The partial y is d, d, x of 1 plus x y of e x y I think uh, maybe I will combine this first to make sure that this is correct So partially derive x, this is y, e, x, y, plus we have x, x, so y, e, x, y, and then plus x, y, and then squared, right, and then e, x, y. <clears throat> and then we can have uh, this will be 2y plus xy squared which is the same the same so since it's equal so since uh, this equal then the the uh, the factor fields is open and simply connected so f is open and simply connected so f is conservative
uh, do we need to find the potential function oh if it's conservative we need to find the potential functions okay let me rewrite again the partial x is y squared e x y partial y is 1 plus x y e x y so i will choose the partial x because i see the x over there <coughs> so i will integrate with x okay so our proposal this implies the f So if we integrate, it will, it will be uh, integrating the e with power of x, and then we divide by y, right? So this will be y squared e x y divided with y, right? Or this will be let me write again y e x y. So this is basically just integrating as usual, and then plus. We will have a constant, and let's say this is g, <coughs> g of y, and then taking this with respect to y, taking partial derivative again to get the partial y, and this will lift to e x y plus. dy and then e wait wait so I need to in, in uh, der derive the e x y I think it's already earthquake again it's Increase. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Just hide under the table. Yeah. If something happens, just go under the table. <laughs> the table is too small, I think. It's okay, right? Yeah, I think I think it's it's small smaller. Okay. So this will be derived, so this will be x, y, e, x, y, or 1 plus x, y, e, x, y, right? And this will be having uh, g prime y, which we can get the g prime y from, from our uh, equations and since this is nothing else in our partial y so we can conclude that g prime y is equal to zero which give you g as a, a number or constant so we have a potential functions y e with power of x y plus g y or a constant I think you can check if you want to take the del and it will become the the um, the factor fields right okay i think as long as you have your ability to uh, derive partially uh, it should be okay okay so I, I think if you are maybe missing out on some parts of uh, techniques uh, i think the the basic fundamental techniques you should be able to uh, to master it 
or review okay, just review as uh, as usual okay so that's uh number five Now, before going for another numbers, let's uh, maybe pick up uh, some number between 16 to this 22. Okay, I think let, let's start from 16. Okay, let's so start from 16. 16 is we have three variables. So we have uh, f, uh, x, y squared, z plus x squared. And then we are given the curve, okay? We are given the parametric equations, which is described over there. And we are also given the, the parameter from negative one to one. So there are several ways to, to solve it, but I think the shortest one is just look at the parameter so it's from negative one to one. So we can, we can say that we know the initial point and we know the terminal point. So we can, we can check the, when t is negative one, x is one, y is one, and z is two. So this will be, initial point will be one, one, two. When t is one, x is one, y is 1 and z is uh, another 1 should be 1 yeah it's the same so maybe take, taking 0 okay so check check for possible point that might have so it so it, it when it moved from negative one to one, it's going back to the same positions, right? So let's check it equals zero. So X will be um, zero, Y will be E negative one, Z will be, will be zero. But I don't think this will be, will be uh, possible. I think we need to, to get into let me check one more time so oh I think I think let me let me erase for a while yeah, let me erase for a while let me rewrite what we have on the line integral. So the line integral, this will be equal the f r of b minus f r of a. Okay. And r of t. This will be t squared and t squared plus t. So 
So if we look on one, I think there is something mistake here. Oh, I, I, I did the correct one, but why I erase? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So when R is uh, when R is one, this will be one, one, two. When R is negative one, this is the same one, one, one. But this is one minus one, right? So zero. Okay. Yeah. Why I'm I'm plus? So I I, I confuse why it's the same. Okay. Now this correct. Okay. So what we have now, we could just um, plug in to the F, which means we are plug in one one two and one one zero. So F one one two minus F one one zero. So this will be two plus one is three. minus F110 is 1, so it's 2. Okay, so this is the evaluate, okay. <clears throat> so you could, you could use this fundamental uh, line integral theorem, which define as the del F dot dr, and basically you could um, input the endpoints and minus the initial point. Okay, let's go for another equations. So this question is more uh, addition have additional part, but I think I think this should be very similar. So number A, finding the potential function, we already did that. And number B, use the part A to compute the um, in line integral f dot dr. And it's all the, the, um, all the factor fields, they have the uh, curve. So I think this is quite similar. So I think we can skip for a while later maybe if we have time maybe maybe this one number 25 or 26 I think this also very similar uh, oh maybe maybe number 20 but anyway or maybe maybe this one first but let me give you uh, let me give you num maybe number 19 first. Okay, number 19. You want to try number 19? Okay, maybe try first. Just check whether you are familiar with the questions. Okay, just write down uh, the questions. So on number 19, we have factor fields okay we have factor fields and then first is we need to find the potential function the small f and then after we get that then we can use to find the uh, the line integral f dot dr. So basically similar to number 16. So idea here is we have partial x, partial y. We find the f. And then that, that f, we are going to use like, like this one, similar to this one. Because we have the t, right, 0 and 1. So basically finding the uh, potential functions and then input the potential function to find the uh, the line integral f of the function. Okay. I think all the questions they are, they are pretty much 
similar. Because I need to prepare another one. So that, that's maybe for, for Friday. Okay. For now, I would like to try from the very basic part okay, so that you can have some familiarity with the, with the context. Do you think it's difficult or not? So, 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 so. I, I mean, like, it's not pretty much like, complicated, but like, it, it has some process. Not as much as the, our, mid <laughs> our midterms. It's, a, it's a too much metrics and, <laughs> and crazy things. Announce in the Moodle so that everyone. Okay. And we get some 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 students asking about do we need to go? And then I think because it's it's not as much as the previous one, so I think no notes, and hopefully can help you to familiarize. Before final exam, I will allow. Okay, so first, we have uh, consider the this vector field as the partial x for the potential functions, right, and partial y. <clears throat> and both of them, uh, we can choose which part that we are we are going to integrate. Okay. Let's say we integrate the partial x. So taking this and if we integrate the x squared, it will be 1 over 3x cubed, right? 1 over 3x cubed, y cubed. And plus, we have the, uh, let's say, g of y. And then taking this into another partial with respect to y. This will result in partial y. Um, three, it's canceling, so x cubed y squared plus g prime y. And since there are nothing else, so we can, we can suggest that, or I think we can agree that we can say that the g of y will be a constant. Okay. Let me make it small first. <coughs> so our potential functions is one over three x cubed y cubed. Plus k. K can be can be numbers, but it it doesn't really put much anything. So we could imagine k as a zero. It's also possible. So let let's say if k is zero. So we can have this f, okay? Because we only need this um, um, variable structures. So the next part is we are going to take the this f dot dr, which is basically this is the same thing as this, and we can have the r a minus the f uh, 
okay rb so i forget uh r of t is we have given r of t is t cube minus 2t and t cube plus 2t this is our r and then taking t from 0 to 1 so oh i think i have mistake here this is not a it's b and a sorry b and a okay okay so r of so t is from from 0 to 1 right so 0 to 1 so r1 is uh minus 1 and 3 r0 is 0 So this will be equal f r1 minus f r0. So f f x y is this, right? So we put negative one three or Maybe let me input this here, or maybe let me, different color. This one is negative one, three. This becomes negative one over three. And then we have 27, or 27 divided by three is negative nine. another and for f zero zero it's just zero so which means this is going to be negative nine okay, the result is negative nine okay so that's pretty much for uh, number 19 Okay, maybe as the last part, we can look at the work on the done by the force field. And it has a moving object from point to point. So we can start number 29 or 30. Maybe we can start number 29. But basically, uh, to find the work, is basically to find that this will be line integral f dot dr, right? This is the work. So basically, we are back to what we have in the uh, the theorem. So this will be equal to line integral del f dot dr, or this is f r b minus f r. A. Okay, the same thing. So basically, what we need is we need to find the potential F, use that function, and then we have the R, which we need to define the R by the points. Okay, so we have the points P, Q, so we need to describe the point P, Q as in R.
or just using the x y okay or in this case is basically we can say the f r b is uh, this is technically the r is the x let's say x2 uh, y2 minus the x1 uh, y1 this is the the terminal point and this is the initial so for number 29 we can find the potential functions we can find through so f is um, x cube uh, y cube and then basically we say that the partial x is x cube so we can have the uh, suppose that we have the our proposal for the potential functions that this is supposed to be um, the f that we integrate with respect to x and we have another functions g and then take partial y and taken this into partial y Oh, why well, I'm I'm adding the y. This is derived. So this will be zero, right? Yeah. Okay. Zero plus g prime y. Since this is supposed to be equal, so g prime y is y cube, right? So g of y will be one over four y power of four plus constant. So the f is 1 over 4 x and 1 over 4 y. <coughs> we can ignore the constant for, for this kind of situation because basically when we partially derive, it, that will be um, getting into 0. So using this f to this, so we get work will be f uh, 2, 2 minus f 1, 0. So take input 2, 2. <coughs> we will get the 16 over 4. So 4 plus 4, right? And then minus 1, 0. So we have 1 over 4. So 8 minus 1 over 4, or uh, 31 over 4. The work done is 31 over 4. OK, just to make some conclusions, if you see the picture 31 and 32, if I draw something like this circle, and you see the arrow directly moving out, same, uh, same directions all over the place, which means that it's not conservative. And this will be conservative. Okay, I think that's all for today.